Hi y'all, this is Debbie Arnold with Dining with Debbie and I'm here prepping uh, for our dinner tonight. We're going to be having some Maryland style crab cakes. Um, we love crab cakes and but I use frozen uh, lump crab meat that I have in my freezer. I buy that usually whenever we go to the beach. Um, it's available canned around here but I just don't like that as much. And you can also buy it frozen, I believe, in certain places. So anyway, um, look for it in your grocery store. Ask them for it if they don't have it. It's, uh, you don't go to the expense necessarily, unless you just want to, of jumbo lump crab. Lump crab works just fine for this. All right, so I'm actually doubling this recipe because I'm going to freeze some of the crab cakes that I make and have those ready in my freezer just so I can fry them up later on. But ordinarily, you would start with eight ounces of lump crab meat. Uh, and the recipe for that, this, excuse me, is on my blog, diningwithdebbie.net, under Maryland Style Crab Cakes. And I will also post the um, ingredients and everything for this uh, on this video at the end of it, okay? All right, so we're going to start with, um, we start with uh, two, I'm doing double, so I'm going to try to say it for just one, uh, one beaten egg yolk, okay, a teaspoon of Creole mustard. If you don't have Creole mustard, if you've got coarse grain mustard, uh, use uh, a couple of teaspoons of that and then a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Um, I think the Creole mustard is not quite as strong as the whole grain uh, mustard, that the, this harvest coarse grain. So uh, I, I don't want you to use a mustard that's going to overpower the crab, I guess that's what. If you want to use all Dijon, that's fine too. I, I would not use uh, just yellow mustard um, because that is a little bit too strong as well. Okay, so I have in here salt, pepper, uh, lemon juice, uh, the egg yolks that I have beaten up, uh, the coarse grain mustard, and a teaspoon of sriracha. Okay, that's this. If you don't have that and don't use it for other things like I do, then uh, maybe substitute in a teaspoon of Creole seasoning. Um, and if you can get the no salt added, that's preferable, I think. All right, and I have also started adding in uh, just a teaspoon of fish sauce. And here again, this is optional. It's not even in my recipe. I just like the addition of the flavors that it adds to the dish. All right, so I have all that and I have beaten it up in here. And now I'm gonna add in my vegetables. I have finely chopped bell pepper and I call for a red bell pepper because of the sweeter uh, taste to it. I didn't have one, so I'm using an orange one that I had. All right, uh, and we have finely chopped celery in there and a shallot. If you don't have shallot, if you have a mild Vidalia onion, you could substitute that in. The shallot is so mild, and so it doesn't overpower the, the crab. All right, and then uh, some green onion that I pulled from the garden this morning, uh, along with a little bit of chives. My uh, green onions are just about gone. So, uh, and the tops of them were pretty, pretty um, strong. I didn't want that really strong flavor. All right. So I have all of those vegetables and everything added in here. And I'm going to stir that up with that egg and other ingredients. You can see right here. Now, I will tell you that sometimes your crab is going to have a lot of moisture in it. And so you may need to adjust the flour and the panko that goes in this later on. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. But for right now, we're going to mix these all up. I'm adding in my crab. You want to do these ahead of time because you're going to want to refrigerate the crab cakes uh, for at least an hour um, before you try to fry them up. Uh, I don't have an air fryer. I do have convection ovens, so I just didn't see the point in using an air fryer. If you have one and you know how to use it, then by all means use that later on. Uh, I do like to fry these up in my uh, big cast iron skillet, either my enamel cast iron skillet or just my regular cast iron skillet. All right, you can see how it's all mixed up in here. Uh, now, um, I'm going to let this sit for just a little while, and then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to add in some binding ingredients. I like to use Wonder Flour 
Um, you can use all-purpose flour if you want to. I like Wonder because it's, it, uh, it blends in so well. Anyway, I'm going to let this sit for just a little bit, and then I'll come back and show you how we put them together. And then later on, I'll come back and show you how they look after they're all cooked up. Uh, I hope you'll try these Maryland-style crab cakes. And again, you can find the recipe on my blog, diningwithdebbie.net. And I'll also have um, that for you, at least the ingredients for you, anyway, on um, this video at the end. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'll be right back. Okay, so the second step in making our crab cakes is to add the binder. Now, I don't like a whole lot of filler, a whole lot of binder in mine, so you're going to just have to judge this depending upon um, how wet your crab meat mixture is. Crab meat will, uh, after you've been uh, let it sit in the refrigerator for a while, it's going to drain off some more juice, so I suggest that you drain that off carefully too before you add in your filler. Now, I use Wondra, I use Panko, I use breadcrumbs, you know, seasoned breadcrumbs that are already made or those that I have homemade. Um, some people would like to use mayonnaise. I, do, I don't, but that's fine. If you do, there are all kinds of recipes for that on um, the web. So today we're just going to use a little flour and a little of the seasoned breadcrumbs and probably a little bit of the panko. And I can't really tell you how much because it just depends on how you get it in there and you mix it up. Um, I've already stirred some of it in here, so we're not going to need a whole lot. You want just enough just to hold your crab cakes together. Uh, and honestly, you really don't want them to have that. Remember those salmon uh, patties that our grandmothers made that were really thick and they were almost like biting into uh, a salmon sandwich almost. They were so thick with breading. Well, you don't want that for these. You want the crab meat uh, taste to stand out in your crab uh, cakes. All right, I'm going to add just a little bit more flour. And I was out of Wonder, so I'm using my white lily flour. I do like white lily flour because it's a, a fine meal. It's a southern uh, wheat that's a soft wheat. Um, I use different flours for different things, but I really like white lily if I'm going to substitute for Wonder. Uh, but if you can find Wonder, use it. It's easy to mix in here. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, form these into the crab cakes. I don't like really big crab cakes either. I like uh, for them to be on the smaller side. You know, you'll go into some restaurants and they'll just be huge. I like mine to be smaller. Uh, I, I like the crispiness on the edges of them. And I just think that they do better. And because these still have the raw onions and the raw peppers in there, we want those to get done as well. So I use an ice cream scoop, the, the big one. That's just kind of my guide. And then I help to use my hands, help it out with my hands. And that's about the size that I like. So I'm going to put these, I'll form these out. And if you find that they're not sticking together well, then you're going to have to add in a little bit more binder, whether it's the breadcrumbs or your flour uh, or your more panko, whatever it might be. And for those of you that aren't familiar with panko, it's uh, those are Japanese breadcrumbs. Just about everybody is near familiar with them now. Okay, so well, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to put these back in the refrigerator uh, and we will then come back and cook them later. You can either bake these or you can fry them. Or, uh, I probably am going to pan fry these today. So uh, come back, stay with me. We're going to finish these up and we'll have some delicious crab uh, cakes uh, to eat uh, this evening for our dinner. I am going to freeze part of these as well, like I told you. And, um, you know, you want to use those up probably within a month. But they're nice to have on hand and have ready in the freezer to cook up and have for your dinner. So I'm going to finish making these up, and then I'll see you in a little bit. Well, I'm back, and we're about to finish up these crab cakes that we started earlier. And we're ready to fry them up. They've been in the refrigerator at least an hour after I have made them into the cakes. And I strongly encourage you to do that. This is not something you want to rush. Um, they will set up better and hold, hold together better if you will do that. So I have one here that's ready to go into the fry pan at 370 to 375 degrees, about a medium high um, heat is what you want. You don't want them too hot, okay, because they'll fry too fast. All right, so I have one ready. 
I'm going to slip it into the pan, my little spatula. And yeah, it's ready. You can see it that it's starting to um, sizzle around there. And I have one here waiting in the egg wash. What we have is two eggs that have been beaten with a couple of tablespoons of water. And we use that first. We're going to dip it into the egg wash and then into the dry mix, which is uh, the wonder or the flour uh, and the panko. And the panko just gives it an extra crunch. A lot of people don't use that but I like that crunchiness on it, okay? Uh, if you see that your crab, crab <laughs> cakes are not holding together, together well, you may need to mix them up with just a little bit more binding agent, such as the flour uh, or whatever. A lot of people use mayonnaise to bind them. I do not, I simply just never have done that. I should probably try it just to see what it's like. I'm gonna bump the heat up here just a little bit. It's just 380 degrees right now. So um, I'm gonna fry these up and they'll be nice and brown and ready for our dinner. I'm gonna hold them at a 200 degree oven until our dinner is um, ready. And I think you would really, really enjoy these. You can make these up and serve them with a comeback sauce. Uh, you can find that recipe on diningwithdebbie.net or you could, a uh, romalade would be good. Uh, Tartar sauce would be good if that's your thing, or even uh, you know a, a seafood sauce that you buy bottled at the grocery store that'd be good, or just some lemon, which is what we will do, because we like the taste of the crab and we like for it to stand out. I don't want to mask it with a whole bunch of sauce on it, but there are certainly options that you can do that um, you would enjoy. I hope you'll give these a try. If you spread the crab out. Uh, you know, into several patties, you're going to be able to feed your family quite well. Uh, I'm serving two patties per person tonight. Um, the one I have in the skillet right now is larger than the others, but it just turned out that way. I had a little extra le leftover. I wasn't going to just make a tiny little patty with it. Y'all wouldn't either. Um, it's about the size of what you might have um, been used to as a salmon patty years ago when moms and grandmothers, and maybe even you, still do that. Uh, and anyway. I hope you will give these a try. I'm going to give a little flash here, get a little browning going on. I have in here some peanut oil. Now, I use peanut oil or rice bran oil generally to do my frying because I like the way that they crisp things up and I like the way that they don't impart a flavor into whatever I'm frying. Uh, peanut oil is typically used. Um, Oh, like when you're frying your fish or whatever. And I know the rice bran oil is used throughout Arkansas, especially uh, for frying fish. You'll find it in big containers uh, in the big box stores um, that, where restaurants use it. Uh, I don't know if it's available um, in the grocery store. I, when I was a brand ambassador for Riceland, uh, I was able to get some, and I've had that uh, stash back. And it's so, so good, y'all, because it, it really is a clean oil, has a high uh, temperature for frying, and I really, really like it. So I hope you'll give it a try. Anyway, it's an Arkansas product. We're proud of it. We love it. So uh, give it a try, and it, I'm going to serve these up tonight with a peach and burrata salad and some grilled corn on the cob. I hope you'll give these a try and enjoy the taste of summer. There's nothing better than crab cakes with some fresh corn out of the garden and that those, that fresh peach uh, salad that's coming up. I mean, how do you say summer without saying that? So I hope you'll enjoy it. I hope you'll come back and see me again um, for some more tasty recipes. I have lots to offer and there's lots on my blog, diningwithdebbie.net. And then you can watch me too on THB11 in Little Rock. So you can look those up online too. So I've been doing that for several years and really enjoy doing that. I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Thanks so much.